Good morning. Oh, Thursday the 12th of November. We're still in the Clyde. I hope everyone is well and doing good. Managing to make some arrangements throughout this lockdown that we're in. And we are supporting... <laughs> we are supporting Movember and um, men's mental health. We're supporting November and men's mental health. And I hope that each of you are well on this fine November morning. It's actually a really nice morning. It's very mild up here in Lanark. And um, the water temperature is not as chilly as it was yesterday. Good morning, Rosalind. I hope you are well. So yesterday, I was talking about attention and what you focus on grows and, you know, the brain doesn't know the difference between uh, positive and negative. It doesn't really know, it doesn't really understand the, the differences, you see. So when we think about something, uh, we have something in our mind, uh, those thoughts create a chemical component to them. Okay, so chemicals like drugs, or whatever that might be. And some of those chemicals, um, and the majority of those chemicals are helpful in the short term, but in the long term, they can be toxic and very debilitating, okay? So, for an example, if you like puppies, uh, dogs, or if you like kittens, if you like cats, or whatever animal or... Whoa. It just flew right over us there. Um, so if you are, if you can think about something like flowers or something that gives you a sense of tranquility or a little puppy, you've got a little puppy in your arms and it's got its wee puppy breath and its wee pink tummy and its wee tails wagging, right? And you think about that, that gives you a certain feeling. It makes you feel a certain way, okay? Now, if you imagine a crocodile coming up behind me right now and um, ripping my head from my torso or you witness somebody you loved being attacked by somebody and you have that thought and you see that image that creates a set of chemicals that makes you feel a certain way okay so we have thousands of thoughts every day and each of those thoughts has a chemical component so if you look at psychology repeating repeating I've said this before but um, if you, it's thoughts, feelings, action in cognitive psychology. So thoughts, feelings, action. So you have a thought, you have a feeling, the feeling promotes you to action. Now, fight, flight or freeze, rest and digestive thoughts. You can have certain thoughts that calm your limbic system, calm your nervic, ner nervous system. Or you can have certain thoughts that increase your nervous system. So your parasympathetic and your sympathetic limbic system is activated by stimuli in the external world. Now, let's just imagine that the stimuli that you're seeing could be classified as innocent and the meaning that you place upon it could make it dangerous. So depending on what you're thinking about, so if you're thinking about your ex a lot, if you're thinking about, um, if you're thinking about your ex-girlfriend or your ex-boss or someone that did you some kind of harm and you're ruminating about that, and it's uh, giving, it's getting you angry, that's quite a constrictive experience, okay? That's gonna cause you perhaps some harm. And um, over a long period of time, the stress hormones that are associated to those kinds of ruminating thoughts end up paralyzing us and can be toxic on our, uh, on our nervous system and cold. You guys cold? No, it's not too bad, is it? Um, so, right, so what you focus on gives you a certain feeling and what we've got to ask ourselves is, is that feeling a contractive experience? Does it cause you to tightly construe your reality or does it cause you to loosely construe your reality? Does it create space? Does it create 
place for growth? Does it create expansion within you? Or does it cause constriction and tightness in the way that you construe your reality and your reality becomes very small and very debilitating based on how you're thinking, right? So it sounds easier than it is, but if you can imagine in your mind, your mind's like a set of scales. So imagine you've got this set of scales and ask yourself on the scales, are the scales tipped more to thoughts of negativity, towards anger, towards isolation, towards um, tightness, you don't feel as if anything's going right for you, you feel as if um, you've had the raw end of the deal, you feel as if um, you can't understand why nothing's working, you, 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 you might feel like a victim, you might feel um, angry and upset quite a lot of the time, you might feel depressed or unmotivated, right? So ask yourself, where are your scales sitting? Are your scales sitting on a equilibrium of balance where there's a lot more joy and connection and harmony and happiness and freedom and flow? Flow is a great word. Is there a lot of flow? Is there a lot of things happening at the right time for you? Do you feel as if you're in the right place? Do you feel as if... Um, you're working with life, or do you feel as if life's working against you, right? Now, this could be a part that what what what, what might be helpful is to start to read. Did you <laughs> what happened there? Um, okay, so the equilibrium in the scales might be teetering more towards um, more constrictive and um, upsetting ways of thinking. So, start to focus and start to increase. So, last night, we went out walking. Last night at seven o'clock, five of us went and walked actually round here, up round the top there, up round the loop. It worked out at seven miles. I thought it was eight. It's eight from my house, but we left from Castlebank Park. And we um, left at seven o'clock. I get back in the house at ten past nine. Absolutely fantastic. Had such a laugh. Um, one of the guys fell over a tree stump and kind of was rolling about in the leaves and then, you know, that became a running joke and, you know, they're just a wee bit of, um, bit of banter and uh, we had we had a really we had a really good laugh, we had a right good time, morning Sarah, and those kind of experiences are, they, they, they enrich the quality of our thinking, they enrich the quality of our experience, right, rather than sitting in the house and feeling lonely and feeling that, um, don't know what he's up to look. Ralph, what's that your tune? Right, so questions we need to ask ourselves is on our equilibrium of our mind, are we more gravitating towards negative experience, debilitating experiences, experiences where we're not engaging with our reality, um, experiences where we're we're not fully present in our reality, or are we giving ourselves to our reality? Are we having rich and quality and meaningful relationships with people? Are we getting to laugh more than we do cry? And where are we focusing on our attention? Okay, and well, how do you start? To Morning, Carella. Hope Munich is well. It is actually quite cold, look. Don't know if you can see that in the camera. Um, so it is starting to get cold because my brain's starting to freeze now I will remain focused on what I'm trying to say so look first of all start a journey from where you are not from where you want to be so if, if life is difficult if you are ruminating if you are pining over an ex if you are um, uh, ruminating over an ex that caused you harm or a boss that perhaps unfairly dismissed you or you feel as if it was unfair whatever that might be okay just accept that hold that thought and then morning Donna and then start to look at creating more 
looking for more joy, looking for more bliss. Now that can be really, really difficult and I'll talk more about this tomorrow because it's chemicals that we've got running through our system and these chemicals that could be fear chemicals or cortisol or adrenaline or chemicals that are associated with um, negative experiences, we can actually start to become addicted to our own biochemical factory, our own biochemical network within ourselves. And that's why it can be so difficult to actually change our mindset and reframe and refocus our narrative and our reality to have a more positive outcome. But I'll talk more about that tomorrow. So, um, Movember, Comrade. Um, Comrade just flew by. And um, 